this work done. Well, that's all right. I will be so. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Kit Dunlap, and I'm president of the Greater Hall Chamber of Commerce. Welcome. I know most of you, you're members of our chamber. If not, we would invite you to join our membership. One of the most active chamber programs is our health care committee, talking about tort reform, cost and access to health care, health care education, the latest services and information on our hospital, Northeast Georgia Medical Center, and our many physician groups. We have several healthcare events during the year highlighting health and wellness and many healthcare services offered in our community. <clears throat> you have in your folder the next big chamber healthcare event, and that is our annual Health Smart Expo on October the 7th, and it will be at the Civic Center. It features free screenings some 60 healthcare booths, a breakfast with a well-known speaker, and we're talking about aging this year. Some of us need to learn a little more. Come on now. We'll have free seminars, and we'll recognize the most fit companies. We would love to have you join us at our annual Health Smart Expo. And stay tuned. Uh, in the spring, we're really uh, planning a another big healthcare event. I won't tell you much about it other than have you ever heard of Blue Zone? If not, you can uh, Google it up and find out. This is the fourth year that your chamber has brought to the community the latest information on health care reform with the help of our sponsors and our speakers today. We have experts that will give you the latest information on the Affordable Health Care Act and what we can expect going forward or maybe don't know. The Affordable uh, uh, Health Care Act affects us all, whether it's individually, whether it's our families, our businesses, whether it's a small business, a large business, our hospital, and our own physicians. I've attended many health care reform seminars, but I know that we have the very best experts and best people today to tell you what is happening. Our sponsors for today, in which you have up here, Brunel University, and we're in the Brunel Downtown Center, and uh, you'll hear more about that, and if you haven't had a chance to look around, uh, look at some of the wonderful artwork. Turner Wood and Smith Insurance, Rushton and Company, ProCare RX, and Northeast Georgia Health System. Uh, and if you get a chance to be uh, outside again and you can go by the lobby displays and learn a bit more about uh, the companies that are sponsoring today. Thank you for coming. Be thinking of some questions. You have in your folder a little pad and if you'll jot down a question, we'll take them up periodically and bring them up here and at the end we'll have a little pa panel and try to answer some of those questions. Uh, <clears throat> there is coffee and bottled water back in the lobby. So uh, make yourselves and, and uh, help yourself. But we do ask if you'll click off that little cell phone uh, and we'll get started and, uh, on our program. I am a graduate of Burnett, it was then Burnett College. And uh, I serve on the, it's my pleasure to serve on the board of trustees at Burnett. But it's my pleasure today to introduce to you uh, the president of Burnett University, Dr. Ed Schrader. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about what's happening in healthcare education in this building. Uh, how proud we are that uh, Bernal is part of our community. Dr. Schrader. Well, if any of our um, insurance representatives are here, especially our liability insurance representatives, you, you know that we've been engaged for several years now in a serious process of inter enterprise risk management. So I want to say right now, over here we have a slip hazard. <laughs> That's where I spilled my water when I sat down. So when, when panelists go up there, 
that you think of that clear cup as, as an orange cone, okay? <laughs> Don't step on the cup and you won't slip down. Well, thanks, uh, thanks so much for coming to our uh, downtown center. We've tried to utilize this uh, auditorium and stage for uh, community events just whenever possible. During the summer, we, we have uh, John Gerard summer s a concert series in here. We still have little theater programs in here. Uh, some of the GTA and, and Bernal music uh, um, recitals are in here. So you're, you're welcome. We welcome back. It's, uh, it's nice to have a third stage. There aren't many schools of 3,000 students. Let, let that sink in. 3,000 students. Uh, that have three performing stages. The reason I let that sink in is that most of the people who live in Gainesville still drive by the, the front of uh, the History Center or go down Green Street and they see that nice tiger we put up and they think, how can that little women's college do all that? Um, if it were just that little women's college that uh, the kit was talking about, we wouldn't be doing all that. The question is, would we even be here? Um, women's colleges on their own single gender, a sing, single gender, uh, non-graduate program, non-professional program schools that have survived from a time gone by are, are having a hard time to surviving at all today. On the other hand, Bernal uh, should be above 3,000 students this year. We're about 250 students in headcount above where we were this time last year. The majority of our students um, are in pre-professional programs that are not in the women's college. The women's college is about a 900 student residential liberal arts program. So with 3,000 students, you know, your math is right. That's another 2,100 students doing other things. Um, we got the word the other day that Bernal is the second largest MBA program in Atlanta. We have 604 uh, students in, enrolled in our MBA program. Georgia State has 624. The Terry College of Business has 420. And it goes down from there. So our pre-professional and professional graduate programs are, are leading our growth. As a whole, though, the healthcare undergraduate and graduate programs are our largest commitment and our largest number of graduates each year. We, we graduated last year from Bernal 924 students, and about two-thirds of them were, un were graduate students, and they were equally divided between healthcare and, um, and MBAs. So that's, that's where Bernal is going. If you've been in this building before, uh, it was the Bernal Downtown Center. You, you probably equate the arena to the smell of diesel and the roar of tractors and the tractor pull. Uh, or, a, or a gun show, or a graduation. But today, of course, if you go down and try to find the arena, you won't find it because it's been transformed into 90,000 square feet, two-story academic facility, home to our uh, doctorate of physical therapy program. We have our first class of DOTs enrolled. They, um, they came from across the United States they are excellent students. They'll be here for three years pursuing their doctorate in physical therapy. And uh, each subsequent year, we'll have about 40 to 45 new DOT students enrolled. So as we accumulatively grow over the next three years, we'll get up to about 120 doctoral students here. Um, and that's a, that's a substantial increase in uh, economic uh, development for the city of Gainesville and the county of Hall, but also the quality of health care in, in North Georgia. <clears throat> of course, you already know that we graduate 30 to 40 occupational therapy master's students licensed to go to work in occupational therapy. In the world today, uh, a doctoral degree is what is required, a clinical doctorate, to go to, uh, to work as an independent licensed uh, uh, physical therapist. To go to work as an independent licensed occupational therapist, uh, a, a master's degree, I won't say only a master's, it's quite a, quite a difficult master's, but a master's degree is required, not, not a doctoral degree. However, there is a move towards moving up 
on a national level from a master's to a doctorate at the entry-level practice position sometime in the near future. Well, Bernal has already established a doctorate in occupational therapy. We have the program ready and we'll be enrolling students in it next year. Not because we have to, but because we want to be ahead of that curve, and, and that curve certainly will be here. We continue to graduate uh, um, doctors in nursing practice, which is the, the highest attainable clinical doctorate that you can attain in, as a, a family practice nurse. Uh, the majority of our family practice uh, nursing candidates graduate on the master's level and go into practice at that point. Uh, it's not required that you, you uh, obtain a doctorate in nursing practice to be a, a nurse practitioner, but again, if you want to teach or advance your career, and, and in advance of the anticipated move to a, a clinical doctorate there uh, nationwide, maybe a little slower than the OT, we're now established that program. So we have three healthcare doctorates, OT, PT, uh, and, um, and nursing practice. And we hope the folks that are associated with your programs and your institutions are, are hiring Bernal grads and that they're doing great jobs for you. So that leads me into some conversation about the Health Care Act because one of the, the underlying truths in the Health Care Act that we have seen is that there is a strong uh, economic and, and regulatory push towards extending the hands of the physicians who are overseeing personal care. And what that means, it means providing the physician as a physician manager with skilled health care givers in his or her office that are not MDs, but are physician's assistants or nurse practitioners or other um, uh, clinical, um, clinically trained experts. So that's what Bernal has been emphasizing, and that's what Bernal is focusing on, and that is providing all of the health care workers that cluster around that, that uh, MD manager or around that clinical operation. Although, of course, some of, some of our folks do, uh, do up, go out straight into individual private practice. I want to mention one more thing that's not specifically derivative of the the Affordable Care Act, but is a result of it, at least the popularity of our program is a result of it, and these programs are springing up all across the nation, and, is a, and it is the Masters in Gerontology. It is an interdisciplinary healthcare degree that um, requires that the undergraduate degree be one of the undergraduate uh, healthcare specialty fields, nursing or OT or something along those lines or, or undergraduate degree in um, health science. And then takes the student on into a master's level observation and study of how to manage the needs and the uh, family relationships of aging parents and of, of aging citizenry. Gerontology is something that we uh, 100 years ago didn't have to worry about because everybody died when they were 60. Now, Today, it depends on what book you're reading, you know, you're, you're either 60s, either today is 30 or today is 20. Um, I'm going for 20 myself. That means I'm 24. Uh, <laughs> I, guess when I'm, I guess when I'm 70, I'll be 25. I don't know, you know, it keeps, keeps pushing out. But if there are any actuaries here today, they can tell you about the tremendous shift in actuarial tables. The, uh, the fact is today, if you live to be 80, 80 years old, which is much more likely than not with today's medicine, you have a greater than 75% chance of living to be 90. Now that did not used to be the case. The big change in medicine hasn't been getting people to live from 60 to 70, but getting to 70 and 75 and having the shot at 90, um, you know, that, that used to be few and far between but they're not anymore. And hence the study of geriatrics and long-term wellness and taking care of oneself with um, health care providers uh, sort of overseeing that is, uh, is the way to go. And we all know how expensive the, the regulations and the regulatory environment has made staying in the hospital multiple nights. 
So the, any hospital today has a huge impetus to do really good work on an outpatient basis, a really good work in minimum impact uh, uh, procedures and getting those patients back into their own homes, both for their quicker recovery, but for minim minimizing uh, expenses. So that's what you're gonna talk about today. We're all involved in it. The one thing we can say at Bernal is, before the Health Care Act was enacted, and you all remember, there were all these huge statements of calamity and collapse and the you know, price of insurance and, and health care was going to go up 100% in six months. And Well, of course, that was fear and uncertainty and unknown. The price of health care continues to go up. And I can't say the one real plus that the folks who voted in the Health Care Act kept saying is, well, you know, the price is going to go down. It may in, in some industrial settings, but, you know, for a small business like us, the price of health care continues to go up. And it continues to be uh, one of the major issues that affects our ability to compensate and employ uh, our various employees. So we really appreciate your interest and focus on effective application of health care and the law so that we provide good health coverage and don't go broke doing it. And I would say the other issue about the, the Affordable Health Care Act is, okay, we got over that first year and we didn't go up 100 percent, so everybody took a deep sigh of relief, but the trouble is things keep kicking in, <laughs> as Kit said. You know, things keep happening, different timelines keep being we keep coming to the end of, and then we hit another little wall of uncertainty. So we, we keep hitting these walls of, of never been into that country before situations until we get past all these initial timelines. So we thank you for being here to help us try to figure them out uh, and to apply them as best we can. So thank you so much. Um, I don't know who's taking it off from here, but don't slip. Uh. Well, it's David Miller. I